Um, so I'm here to talk to you today um, about product visibility and um, improving your um, organic rankings on uh, Amazon. Now I'm not sure how many of you here um, <coughs> do market on Amazon, um, but it's becoming um, quite a big topic and realistically a bit of a discipline in itself. Um, so I'm just going to take you through some of the things that I've been um, uncovering over the past few years. I'll just give you a bit of information about me. I am a digital marketing uh, manager, uh, well, uh, e-commerce uh, European manager for uh, Remington, Russell, Hobbs and George Farmer, which is part of Spectrum Brands. Spectrum Brands is a Fortune 500 company, um, 5.6 um, billion global turnover. They've got plenty of brands within their portfolio, like IMs, Nuka Nuba, um, obviously uh, my brands, which are Remington, Russell, Hobbs and George Farmer. Um, you've got Stanley, um, there's numerous brands that you have uh, probably heard of. Um, I have a, a strong um, digital bias and SEO background, um, which has kind of lended itself quite nicely to um, understanding um, Amazon and, and kind of what's going on and how, how they've evolved from just being kind of a, 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 an online selling channel to more of a, a, a product search engine, which I'll cover in more detail. Um, so obviously I specialise in direct to consumer e-commerce, um, I do the likes of Magenta as well um, and uh, uh, D2C e-commerce stuff, I have got previous B2B experience as well, um, particularly with uh, Amazon that I've been doing a lot with over the past three years and also just to explain away the bizarre um, Twitter handle at the bottom which is completely <laughs> un um, unrelated to digital, um, I'm also a martial arts instructor <laughs> for 10 years. Um, so I feel the need to explain to a lot of people go, hmm, she's karate barbie, that's a bit weird. Um, so yeah, that's me. So just to give you a rundown um, with regards to Amazon and what the uh, size of the Amazon prizes and why I personally feel it's important that if you are um, uh, selling products um, direct to consumer um, on your own site, that um, Amazon is something that you should really um, not just think of as you know, a sideline channel. 54% um, of product searches um, now actually begun on Amazon rather than on Google. That's recently switched in 2015. That was that thing was the opposite way around. It was 54% uh, on Google, the rest were done on Amazon. And it, there's been a big shift um, since then and this was confirmed last year. 90% um, of product views um, on Amazon start from a search. Yeah? So um, I don't know any a single person that uses Amazon's navigation, everybody uses the big white box at the top. And 77% of shoppers never get past the first page, um, which is quite a significant um, proportion of um, the people there. So covering a bit more detail, the retail phenomenon that is Amazon, um, there are 86% of UK shoppers uh, that use Amazon. Uh, it's also massive in Germany, obviously we may be in the uh, European uh, e-commerce manager start to see the growth, um, it's growing in Spain, um, obviously it's not as big yet, it's growing in Italy, France is a big player, but Germany is actually a bigger player than the UK, um, but again, 86% uh, of um, UK shoppers do use Amazon. 13% uh, is your average conversion rate for non-prime users, um, which when you compare that to the average e-commerce store, um, your own e-commerce store, a good e-commerce conversion is usually about 3%. Um, 2 to 3% um, can be considered quite a good conversion um, from a direct um, e-commerce store. So 30% is, is quite significant. Um, what's even more significant, given Amazon's big drive to recruit people to its uh, Prime program, and for those of you not familiar with Prime, it's basically you get um, you pay an annual subscription or a monthly subscription, uh, you get Prime Video, which is similar to like their version of Netflix, you get music, uh, you get millions of products on next day delivery. <coughs> um, but uh, Amazon shoppers um, that have a Prime account um, convert up to a massive you know, 74%. That, that's, that's a huge statistic. Uh, and more and more people are, um, have access to Prime accounts through family members as well and colleagues. Um, so just to talk to you about the Amazon flywheel, which was mentioned um, right at the start. This was uh, this is the famous kind of um, gr uh, graph that um, Jeff Bezos, who is the Amazon founder, drew on a napkin in the Starbucks. Um, and it's a quite a simple business model, really. And this is basically 
drives everything that Amazon do. They call it um, like their innovation, um, and it constantly it, it never stops. Once it starts, it never stops. Um, it's not. It's, it's it's quite straightforward to understand. But basically, in a nutshell, uh, with Amazon, the focus is on customer experience, huge selection, and competitive pricing. Them are the three things that. Um, that, that drive it basically, and this hasn't come from me, this is actually confirmed by Amazon. I meet with Amazon in Munich um, and in London. Uh, they don't necessarily like you sharing these things outside of the company, but it's it, you know, this is um, if you dig a little bit deeper, this, this information is it's, it's readily available. Amazon does not care about brands, that's one thing that I have really learned over the past um, two and a half years. Um, they don't care about brands at all. This has actually come from Amazon as well. This was a statement that they made um, at one of these uh, meetings. Our mission is to help customers find, discover, and buy anything they want to purchase. Okay, that, that's actually, you know. So I've highlighted those important words there, find, discover, and buy, and that pretty much drives everything that we do um, when uh, focusing on our Amazon strategy. So in doing so, it's been quite a, busy, uh, a big business challenge for me to change the mindset of, of the business that I work for from um, work, working, obviously these are heritage brands as a traditional uh, retailer. They've only ever known that wholesaler retailer relationship. They very much treated Amazon like they would do with Argos or Curry's or, or, or any of their other um, customers, so to speak. You know, always that retail wholesale relationship. So to change that mindset uh, within some companies can be quite a challenge, um, but it does, it, it does need to be done. Because successful brands on Amazon treat Amazon like a product search engine rather than a retailer. If, if you take anything from today, if you think about that, that will really, it, it's been a game changer for us to be honest. Um, because they focus on find and buy. So those are the two things, um, obviously, that we take away. Um, and again, that focus. We focus our strategy on those, uh, our search strategy um, on Amazon on those two things. So just to give you a little bit um, more information on what I've uncovered about A9. Now A9 is um, Amazon's um, search algorithm. Uh, they have teams working on that. Again, like Google, they're quite secretive about it, um, but there is quite a little bit that you can uncover. Now, where your product appears on Amazon search results is influenced by performance factors and relevance factors. So, similar to um, yeah, to Google, there's I think it's over 240 different factors um, that can influence um, where your product ranks, um, and there's obviously a team, huge team dedicated to those um, SEO strategies. Again, here you've got these factors, some of which you can affect, some of which you can't, which we'll cover in a little bit more. So just moving on to these factors. So we've got performance, not quite know what's happened there. Availability, click-through rate, conversions, bestseller rank, price, condition, and reviews. So those are all your performance factors. <coughs> and now with relevance, we've got product title, images, videos, back-end search terms, bullet points, A plus content, Q and A's, categories, reviews, and product, uh, product description. Now some of those are interchangeable, so you'll see uh, reviews on both sides there, that, that's a performance factor and it's a relevance factor. Um, those that are ha uh, highlighted there in that green colour, those are ones that we can directly affect. So as a vendor or a um, seller on Amazon, you can directly affect those. Um, by optimising those in green there, you can have an indirect effect on the ones in purple, yeah? Um, orange, unless, uh, in certain circumstances, if you've got a seller account um, and a vendor account, depending on how you operate, or if you operate a hybrid strategy, then you're laughing. Um, hybrid strategy being you've got a vendor and a seller account. Um, you, you, it's, that's really up to Amazon um, in terms of price. Uh, they have uh, constantly monitor up, um, not just third party sellers on there, um, they bring the price down to win the buy box, um, but also they do. Um, scrape and monitor other retailers um, across uh, UK and Europe as well, and that, that's quite they're quite secretive about who they, uh, who they do monitor. So it does start again like um, uh, an SEO strategy with uh, solid keyword research. So we tend to, uh, I suppose our keyword research is quite um, uh, quite more straightforward than maybe uh, SEO. 
um, because we just sort our keywords into find and buy keywords. So obviously find keyword being what, pro uh, what product a consumer is looking for and buy keyword words are what a consumer wants from the product. So we tend to sort them, uh, find keywords are short phrases, can be quite generic, usually have high search volumes, uh, but we find that the consumer is usually earlier on in the buying journey. And buy keywords, usually longer phrases, looking at specific features, um, can have lower search volumes, but we, too, we do tend to find that they convert more because the consumer can be closer to making that purchase decision. Um, can't really get talked to you about Amazon without talking about their text match relevancy and conversion drivers. So, <clears throat> um, you find keywords there, you would play. So, once you've done your keyword research, you would put these in your product title, your back in search terms, your bullet points, your product description. You buy keywords also if you can get them in there your product title, your product description, um, videos as well, A plus content, images, and um, question and answers. So, that's kind of where we sort them. Uh, with regards to uh, optimization. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of differences uh, between Google search versus Amazon search, um, it's a different search engine that's dealing with different shop intent. So we tend to find that searches that are done, because I work very closely with, with um, the digital team and the SEO team, because um, I still can't help but interfere in SEO. <laughs> um, uh, we tend to find that they have different shopper intent. Um, usually uh, on Amazon, they're, they're, you know, they've got a credit card and they're ready, uh, ready to go. Uh, Click-through rate is important to Google. Um, it's very important to Google. It's, it's one of the measurements that, um, that they use. Um, but conversion rate is more important to Amazon because although um, you know the jury's out on whether um, Google uses uh, conversion data, not everybody uses Google Analytics, so it can't, it can't have that. You know, it, it, can, it, it can't know everything about everybody's site, whereas Amazon, they own the platform, so they that they see, um, say it all the way through, so they know what's selling and what isn't. Uh, so it's very important to Google. Uh, also, this is a big one. Amazon PPC affects organic performance, um, and it has no um, when you use uh, Google PPC AdWords, it has no correlation at all. So that's quite important. Because one of the questions I was asked last time was, can you rank on Amazon without doing PPC? It's more and more difficult because it's more and more saturated market, but depending on the niche and depending on what keyword you're typing, then it, it is possible. And you haven't just got Amazon PPC as well, there's other ways that you can drive uh, visits um, off Amazon to um, your Amazon um, uh, product detail page. Um, obviously, the uh, Google algorithm is very complex um, with more influencing factors compared to the younger primitive Amazon A9. So it, it's a lot more of a basic algorithm. It, it can, it's not, it doesn't deal very well with search intent like Google does. So um, uh, an example I gave um, when I spoke about this before is in Google you could type in um, uh, games console made by Sony, and it would serve you a PlayStation, probably in a Wikipedia result. Amazon isn't that bright. <laughs> it can't, uh, it can't do that just yet. It looks for text match relevancy. It's looking for those words in those in those places that we mentioned before. So text match relevancy is very very important. It's yet to deal with a, a user's intent. Um, so bearing that in mind, it's important that you use the right tools for the right job. So um, with uh, you know search um, Google organic search, you would be looking at using um, dare I say it, um, Google Keyword Planner. Um, there's lots of other tools out there, um, and they specifically deal with the Google search algorithm. But when you do that with Amazon, you're using incorrect data, you might as well be uh, comparing apples with oranges. You want to be using specific tools that deal with Amazon searches. So I'm going to cover these now. So um, just to let you know, guys, I'm not on any commission with any of these guys. I'm not an affiliate of theirs. Um, they're just tools that I've discovered um, that work really well um, for the business I work for. So one of these is Celix. Um, we use Celix to do uh, keyword research, but it is a suite of tools that does a lot of other things for you, like monitors, monitors changing in, changes in the content, so if you've got a product listing on there, um, and a third party comes along, you lose a buy box, third parties can come along and change it, or sometimes Amazon just change things at will, um, then 
you, you don't have to sit there manually monitoring your pages, it will send you alerts to tell you that that's happened, that's proved to be a valuable tool for us. But it's, it is great for keyword research. Um, it does give you, you can do reverse async lookup, so you can look up competitors um, that are ranking quite highly uh, in a particular category, and you can see what they're bidding on, not just the PPC with Amazon, but also what's driving sales, and, and, and Sonar by Sellings will do that for you. Um, it does give you like a bit of a, a, a traffic light result, um, kind of like a battery charger on a phone, so the, the, the higher that is, the better, uh, the lower that is, the less searches you've actually got. Um, one that I prefer um, over Celix purely for keyword research is uh, Magna and Cerebro uh, with Helium 10 because what, what it does is it actually gives me search numbers and it tells me how many people within a particular marketplace and it does this across UK, um, France um, and, and quite a few other places. Uh, all the Amazon locales will tell me what the search volumes are. Um, so Helium 10 is a good one that I uh, I do quite like to use for keyword research. And also, um, not forgetting, if you are doing Amazon PPC, then you've got the Amazon um, search terms report that you can run from that. And that's really good for uncovering keywords that do convert well because it gives you conversion rate data. And it's your own conversion rate data. So, one of the things that I found with regards to um, the way in which we market on Amazon is brand descriptions versus consumer searches. What we call a product and how we describe it can often be very different from how a consumer um, searches to find it. And one of the things I found in being in the client side role is sometimes you can become very blinkered, um, and uh, especially with heritage brands, we've got people that work there a long, long time, they become very focused and, and, and insular. Um, here's a really good example. So we call this um, straightener um, the Keratin Protect Intelligent Straightener. Great. It is great, I used it this morning, it's fab. <laughs> um, but we haven't got any research for intelligent strength What we've got is we've got consumer research for hair strengths. So you can see there, just the word straight alone is 10,077. Uh, this is in the UK. But yeah, hair straighteners, as a phrase, is searched for 49,000 um, times a month uh, on Amazon UK. Another example, this is a good one. Foil shaver. So we do um, foil shaves and rotary shaves. I've never done this before. I worked for this company. Um, but a, a foil shaver is the one with the pivoting head. Um, so there you can see uh, Remington FA Ultimate Series uh, foil shaver. No research. Well, barely any research. Foil shaver. You can see there, 1,325. Consumer search is electric razor. See there, we've got electric uh, razor at 7,770 and electric shaver at 6,234. So, because the brand had become quite insular, and that's what um, the, the product marketing team had called it, or the product development team had called it, they kind of stuck with that, and, and it wasn't, we weren't getting the traffic uh, that we should have done. Um, so, just a few top tips for your keyword lists. Um, this is a specific to Amazon. Um, compound words are not indexed automatically, so these are things that Google can deal with, but Amazon can. Um, so, for example, hair dryer and hair space dryer are treated separately, so you need to include both. If that's the keyword you've identified, you need to include them both in the listings. Uh, include all synonyms, so hair dryer and blow dryer, for example. Hyphenated words are treated as two separate words, so no need to include them. So, hair space dryer and hair hyphen dryer will be treated as one word, so you can use one of them. Um, because space is at a premium with Amazon, you see. Um, Unlouts, so anybody that's doing, if you're any of you doing um, international uh, optimization or working with um, other languages, Unlouts in the German language uh, are matched to UE, AE, and OE, so not everybody uses the Unlouts, some Germans actually do type that out instead, so you need to include those as well. And accents are matched to the non accent spelling, so if you don't, if you work with the French language, for example, um, it regardless of whether you have an accent on the character or not, it makes no one, so uh, be safe with that one. And singular and pl plural should, should be matched, so if you say hair straightener and hair straighteners, it shouldn't make a difference. I'm a bit on the fence about that, I've seen some instances where it does match five, but some instances where it's not quite there yet. Um, optimising product titles, so a uh, consumer should know in three seconds exactly what they're buying. <coughs> Um, so, top tips for optimizing your product titles include your most valuable keywords because it's actually the best 
kind of screen real estate. Um, that uh, statement there, a consumer should know in three seconds exactly what they're buying, that's come from Amazon again, not me. Um, Amazon algorithm considers the first 125 bytes. 125 bytes, um, essentially you can consider characters, but uh, umlauts and, and, and accented characters are treated as, uh, as, two, as, two, as two characters. A good structure um, contains brand, product name, product type, features, colour, or size and model number if necessary. Capitalise the first letter of each word. Numbers should be numeric, and if you can, spell out measurements, so that we sell kettles rather than putting an L, we found it much better to use the word liters. Uh, no special characters, claims, discounts, messages, or superlatives. Um, I was in a really getting very strict on superlatives, which are like box or claims and things like that. So we have a Remington Ultimate Series shaver. Um, it, they automatically change the name when we uploaded the product, um, and it's being done by an algorithm, unfortunately. Uh, they changed it to Remington Utmost series because <laughs> Ultimate was too boastful. Um, so you need to keep an eye on things like that, very bizarre. Um, here's a really good example um, of where a competitor was actually doing it better. Um, this is the bronze, uh, it's the best selling uh, uh, shaver within uh, the category, um, the bronze series 3 Pro skin. So you can see here uh, in comparison to our foil shaver title that I showed you before, which was very short, uh, this here. Um, you've got electric shaver, electric razor, cordless shaver. And then you've got wet dry, pop precision trimmer. So those there that are highlighted in red are your fine keywords with the words that I showed you before that have got very high search volume. So those are the keywords that they use to drive traffic to the product detail page. Okay. Once they've got um, that consumer there, they've got a captive market. However, they've got to convert them. So those the words highlighted in purple are your buy keywords. And where you can find your buy keywords are from places like the Q&As within the questions, uh, sorry, the, uh, the questions and answers uh, within your Amazon product detail page. So you can see there, people are asking, uh, can I use this from my face to work shaving form? Does it have a pop up trimmer? Now, rather than keep answering them questions, Braun answered them in the title and it, it, it creates a less resistance to, uh, to purchase and it, it, it's, a, it's a more of a seamless transaction. Um, just moving on now to optimising back-end search terms. I love back-end search terms. Now, keywords um, are a, uh, within Google don't have any effect anymore. Um, so it, back in the days, people used to keyword stuff uh, within that meta keyword field. Um, you can do this like it's the early 2000s on Amazon. Uh, it's a hidden force that can push up your, um, your products to the top of the search results whilst being invisible to the consumer, so it's not shown um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the front page. Okay, so here's a prime example you can use, um, competitor keywords, Amazon don't like you doing it, but um, so say I wanted to put Babyliss in there, um, if you've ever been searching on Amazon and wondered why a particular product has come up when, and it's not a sponsored product, it's usually as a result of somebody putting a competitor keyword in the back end search terms, but you can use it for, um, lots of different things um, but you've got a 249 byte limit in total now this is important because this has changed fairly recently if you go over this limit they'll take everything out they'll disregard everything so you've got a 200 no, so no matter how many spaces it's giving you in back insertion use no more than 249 bytes um, so it's quite a small limit but don't don't go over it whatever you do because they'll just wipe them all out um, consider competitor keywords as well uh, it's not necessary to repeat keywords that are already in your listing. So if you've got them keywords in your title, or you've got them keywords in your bullet points, you don't need to put them in there as well. Um, use that space wisely. Get quite creative. Um, so I'm going to move on now to the bullet points, which are the, uh, the bit that you see on your uh, when you search and your product listing. It comes just under the title. Uh, this is where um, persuasive selling points um, that answer the consumers, so what, work best. You've got to answer uh, what they're looking for. When I first started optimising for the brands that I'm working for, they were very factual. They were 2,200 uh, 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 2, watts, um, you know, 3.4 litre capacity. What? You've got to tell them why it's important, you know, um, and th th that again um, assists conversion. So, um, 2,200 watt motor um, increases drying time by up to 50%, for example. 
possible. So you've got to answer the what's in it for the consumer. So here we're um, including keywords that can't fit in the title. Um, ideally 200 bytes per bullet point, maximum five bullet points, include benefits uh, with features rather than just the features. That's one of the really, really important things that we found that really do help conversion. Um, Capitalise the start of each bullet point. Again, numbers should be numerical and spell out weights and measurements. Moving on to optimising product description. Um, this is write your best ever Amazon compliant sales pitch. Uh, here you've got a 2000 character limit. Um, you want to try and break up your text into paragraphs. Um, you can do that using the key tag in, uh, in the back end of your products. Um, be descriptive. Focus on converting browsers to buyers rather than SEO here. Yeah? So um, it's a less of a waiting really here um, than in some of the uh, places that I've mentioned before. However, it is good for Google. Um, so do bear that in mind that Google does index that content as well. Um, do sell here, but be wary again of superlatives because you'll get Amazon changing them left, right, and centre. Um, no promotion, shipping, or company information is allowed in here either. Um, moving on now to product images. Again, Amazon is a very visual platform. Let's talk about how you could probably buy on Amazon yourself if any of you do. Um, pictures can say uh, pictures worth a thousand words or clicks. So we tend to use reasons to believe images. So uh, we have an Amazon com uh, compliant made product image, which is 80% of the product should be, 85% uh, of the product should be frame, white background. Uh, try and use some images that include product features. So your additional images there are focusing on, uh, on the features and benefits that are probably covered in your bullet points. Um, try and get some in use and lifestyle shots in there as well. Um, lifestyle images because um, a lot of people like to envision themselves using the actual products, how it can be useful for them. Um, include uh, size and scale as well if you can. Um, you know, when we ever got like countertop folders like this, this is a, uh, a mini kettle that we, we sell. It's really cute, but it's, um, it, it performs like a normal standard size kettle, but it's really dinky. So we tried to put it next to the cup there to give you an idea of scale. Um, failing that, we will actually just use measurements and dimension images. Also include all accessories, and um, especially because um, Amazon is being infiltrated a lot by um, cheaper Chinese brands um, who are, um, are highly competitive. Um, and if you're working with a brand that's quite well established, like it Russell Hobbs is a heritage brand in the UK, um, I, I, would, I would bet my life that probably one of you here has got a Russell Hobbs kettle or a toaster. Um, pack, try and use your packaging or brand and use your brand to its best advantage. Um, video optimization. Uh, we found here that educational and how to are the most engaging videos that we, we can use here. Um, you've allowed up to 75 uh, megabytes um, on your product detail page. If you run in a brand store, you're allowed 100 megabytes. Uh, more technical or high end uh, has a more requirement for a video. Uh, so, this thing, for example, is a new straightener that we've uh, released called Curl Straight Confidence, which you can produce curls and you can produce. Um, straighten your hair with you can tell I'm not a girl's girl but uh, <laughs> we found that a lot of consumers need help using it so um, we, we, the more videos we upload with we've found the star ratings have gone up and the conversions have increased with that. Um, try and keep them a silent format if you can so, so subtitles on there as well um, and under a one minute duration. Um, it does help decrease return rates and negative reviews and it's a good way to showcase um, complementing our range of products as well so like in the case of Russell Hobbs usually have a matching kettle, toaster, coffee maker. Um, they don't like you mentioning that on the product page. You've got to stick to the actual product in question, but it's a really good way to, to go, look what else we've got, guys, um, without breaking Amazon law. Um, a plus content for any of you that um, work uh, with the brands or white label products, so you actually um, are the owner of that AC or the creator. It's the, the bit that appears in the, from the manufacturer section. Um, and Amazon say it can increase conversion by up to 12%. Um, for our brand, it's 11.4%, so they are telling the truth. Um, I've given you an example here for any of you that do this. Um, it's a really good, it, it, it basically looks like an e-commerce sales page. So we have a header banner where we try and 
um, feature the product um, in use. We have um, hero image, product title, short description of the brand story on the second module. Um, and then we have the key features and benefits, what we try and do, we try and visualise that because people don't like, people tend to skim read or, or, or just check images, they don't like to, so the people that use Amazon, because uh, of the na very nature of them, are quite time poor, a lot of people, a lot of people shop on Amazon because they quick delivery, so they do skim read, so I try and keep it as visual as possible. Um, full product specification, um, the more you can detail here about uh, uh, the full technical spec of the product, the less returns that you will get, um, and the less and the more managing of their expectations that you're doing. And also, if we can, um, I will put a caveat on this bit here, comparison charts are supposed to be for um, products that are the same as, so we obviously the Russell Hobbs make lots of different toasters, it's supposed to be, say, they should, should really be toaster, 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 but we can tend to use them where, where we can get away with it, because um, the worst they'll do is they'll refuse the content. Um, try and showcase where we've got ranges and products or we've got a matching toaster and kettle and a coffee maker we'll put, or in the instance there which is the um, keratin protect maker we'll put all the range of products on there um, but do be aware that they don't like you doing that so they might refuse it but a lot of times you can get it under the radar. Product variations is really important as well on your product detail page um, so like Scott was saying before um, all the different pages that are produced uh, within Amazon, it, it, again, it produces uh, 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 different, it does produce different uh, ASINs because they are different products. Um, but when you uh, vary them up um, on your product detail page, um, you do uh, get more visibility. So we, it's officially supposed to be used the um, size, colour and style variations of the same product. Um, it does increase product visibility and opportunities for cross-selling. Um, one really important thing here um, that I don't know whether many of you might know about, but if you do put a variation of a product together, so um, a kettle and a, um, uh, say that red kettle there had three stars, but the black kettle had five stars, it can pull the, the reviews are combined because it combines it as one pair of acing, it can pull the socks up of a poor performing product and make it look like it um, in the star ratings is performing better than it is. So um, if that uh, Red Kettle was uh, sat at three stars and it was sat as a standalone product. I might be tempted to combine it with another Russell Hobbs kettle as a different style in order to boost um, boost the ratings. But you do need to be very careful with that because if you're having any stock out issues with any products um, or supply chain issues, or um, there's a thing called the Agden cord where um, somebody, a, a, a buyer can. Um, ring up or, or contact Amazon, email Amazon and report a safety concern, um, they pull an and on cord which basically takes your products off sale. Now if it's a, as a variation or if you're having any kind of um, real issues with a particular product, supplying it, uh, they, and they take it off sale, it's like a house of cards, your whole variation is coming down with it. So do proceed with caution with that. It's great because it can boost your reviews and it can uh, boost the visibility, but by the same token if Amazon decide that um, it know that you're not selling that product anymore or it becomes what's called a crap product um, which is a genuine absent term it stands for cannot realize a profit it's not me being all sweary as usual they will they, when they take that off sale the whole thing's coming down with it so do watch unlink it before they do that and um, post optimization check this um, so once you've done all these things these are the things that you want to be um, monitoring so monitoring your listings for unauthorized changes so you can do all this great work and all this optimization and you get a third party seller um, coming along and changing your content. Um, and that does happen and it's infuriating. Um, so monitor it um, and if you're finding that's happening, get onto Amazon and push and get the changes back and get your optimization back because what you're doing is customer centric. If you drop that word with Amazon in any kind of correspondence you have with them, um, please change this product title back because my product title um, was more customer centric or a better customer experience. Drop any customer experience, customer centric, they sit up like meerkats and they take notice. Um, use rank tracking uh, tools to monitor organic performance against keywords. Um, do monitor QA and reviews for content optimization opportunities because they, they are like a veritable gold mine. Some of them are crazy, don't get me wrong, some of them are just the most bizarre reviews and bizarre um, questions, um, but some of them are really good in your thing. Why have I not put that in the copy? Put it in the copy. 
um, and um, any of the that you use in vendor, um, you should have access to Arrow, which is Amazon Retail Analytics. It does provide KPI data such as glance views, detail page views, and sales performance, so you can get an idea of how your optimization is working and what's converting from that. So, thank you very much for listening.